Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Kubitori Sarasa, a horror game where you stay at a random woman's house, and you quickly find that you both head over heels for each other. Boon. The piercingly cold snow continued to fall. During this season, the wrath of Mother Nature shows no signs of slowing down or stopping. This is a remote mountainous area. A man's shadow is seen walking along the road, which is covered with snow up to his knees. All the cars on the road had stopped moving, the phones were disconnected, and no help was coming. He was at a loss, deep in the mountains, and able to pick up a single signal. He has no choice but to evacuate, but on the way he was separated from his beloved wife, a poor man who was separated from his love by Mother Nature. Where he's headed, and whether he'll even make it back alive, no one can say, we're not gonna make it back alive. I just know how these stories go. Where are you? Where are you? The man seemed to have tears in his eyes as he mumbled something. In the midst of a great snowstorm, he searched for his loved one with bloodshot eyes. He was sweating, even in these sub-zero conditions, as he was in a great hurry. Wandering alone in the middle of a blizzard, anyone could see that only a cruel fate awaited him. The heavy snowstorm obscures his vision. It was getting fiercer and fiercer, and he could hardly stand on his own two feet. Even so, as if searching for something to hold on to, he struggled his way through the pure white world. It was then that his strength reached its limit. Hey, look, a fire. Suddenly, he saw an orange light swaying in the distance. What is that? The man strained his eyes, but he couldn't make it out clearly. In this bad weather, there was no way for him to see what it was. He took one step, then another, carefully and finally it became clear. A person. A person was there. A person holding a lantern in their hand, from which an orange glow emanated. It wasn't his wife, but the mere fact that another living being existed in this hellscape was reassuring. More than anything, just knowing that there was another human being around made him feel less tense. He put his hand to his chest in relief and walked quickly over to the figure. This is just gonna work out. Hail, Traveler. At a distance where the figure's face was clearly visible, they called out to the man. Standing there was a young woman. What's the matter? What are you doing here, in a place like this? Her features were beautifully formed, and her voice had a lovely tone, like a ringing bell. Her luscious black hair was swept by the wind as she stared worriedly at the man. Hmm. Better save, bud. I'm looking for my missing wife. I see. So you've lost your way. Her brow furrowed in the font for a moment, and then she smiled at him, as if she had made up her mind. This is... certainly no place to be standing around. My home is just around here. Why not stop by? Would you trust a random person that sounds like me in the middle of a snowstorm? Well, you probably would have a choice because it's a snowstorm. But, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Trust me, don't worry. As soon as she said that, she turned around and started to walk away. In spite of the poor visibility, the woman walked as if she knew the way. This is usually how the yokai uh, stories start and end up. Under these circumstances, her confidence was an uplifting sight to behold. The man, in the limit of his physical and mental strength, decided to do as she suggested. At least not exclusive to, uh, yokai and things like that. Every nation, um, and, you know, every, uh, place has its like, kind of lore. Uh, and it uses always, like, a repeating factor of someone's lost in the woods, or the snow, or forest, or etc, etc. Or even at sea, and then they meet some woman, and then it just goes downhill from there. The fire in the hearth burned with a crackling sound. 
The gently flickering flames quickly warmed even his freezing body. This hut was very warm. A little old, but sturdy and well-built. It wasn't spacious, but it was more than enough for one person. I see. That must have been quite difficult for you. She was brewing tea as she listened to the man's story. Green liquid is poured from the teapot, spitting out steam as it splashes into the cup. As the man watched, he was struck by memories of his own childhood. Here. Drink up. It's not poison, right? The man took it, wrapped his hands around the teacup to warm them. Normally, he would flinch from touching such a hot object, but right now, it felt about right. You must be cold, aren't you? A warm drink is the best medicine for a cold body. His cold body and mind are gradually regaining its warmth. If he had stayed outside as it was, the man won't go unscathed. He was lucky to have met this woman by chance. Hmm. But at this point, it's no exaggeration to say that she is the man's savior. However, this is not the time to sit around leisurely. Suddenly remembering his original objective, the man felt anxious. While he sits around like this, his wife might be wandering outside in the cold snow. The man can't sit around doing nothing, as he suddenly stood up. Where are you planning to go? Calm down. You're not planning to walk along those snow-overed roads in the state, are you? I understand that you're impatient, but at least get some rest before you go. Although he's perplexed by her words, the man sat back and calmed down. He picked up the tea as he calms his mind, as he lets out a tired breath. The man closed his eyes, as he smells the tea's fragrance. From that tea, he could smell something similar his grandmother used to put in the tea from when he was young. Hmm. Such a ridiculous thing. In such a serious time when my wife is missing. This hut's warmth is able to make me forget all of my pain. You may call me Sarasa. For as long as I can remember, I have been living in here alone. It appears her name is Sarasa. Why such a frail young woman? living alone all the way in such a remote area. Rather, it's very unusual for a person to live so deep within the mountains. I wonder how she does she manage such things like food? Where does she store it? As a lot of questions kept popping up, the man decided to ask her, Oh. Bun, save Bun. Why are you alone? Let's see. Where should I begin? The woman is staring into the air, thinking as if about something as she begins to talk. Both my father and mother have passed away a long time ago. Originally, my family used to live in a village nearby, but... As she reaches that part, the woman paused for a while. I guess it's safe to say that we got kicked out of the village. It can't be helped. Shogun, I know. I wonder if this is the best choice for both the villages and us. Sarasa is looking at the distance, as if recalling something sorrowful. And being chased out. Hearing those words, the man can only imagine a sorrowful scene. I should stop asking questions and pry into her personal circumstances any further. Dear Traveler, it's about time. After you're done resting, are you planning to go out again? I've got to find my wife! You better call it off for today. The blizzard is still raging outside. Are you planning to die? I'm gonna die in here during these stories. Take my chance of the cold. There's something dangerous called Kubitori lurks around these parts. Going out this late at night is very dangerous. Hmm. And don't say such bad things. If you want to leave better to do it tomorrow morning. If you don't mind it here, you can stay for the night. Kubitori. There is a folklore about a monster attached to this land. Hmm. It is said to go cut the necks of any travelers who wander around the mountain. Hmm. Well, if you insist on going, then I'm not going to stop you. You may do whatever you wish. However, if the Kubatori comes and slits your neck, know that I've already warned you. I'll be in your care until morning. You've made the right judgment, dear traveler. 
Please don't worry, and get a good rest. Well, you don't need to worry. Nearby there is a village. I'm sure your wife is doing well somewhere around there. Hearing the man's reply, Sarasa felt relieved and smiled. Without saying anything, she prepared a warm meal in bed for him. Despite the situation somewhere inside the man's heart, he feels both assured while also guilty. Bun. As night comes, the raging snowstorm is not showing any sign of calming down. Instead of settling down, it feels as if it keeps on getting stronger, instead. I wonder if my dear wife is safe out there. Sarasa, she mentioned there was a village nearby. I hope she's truly able to reach there safely. Honestly, I want to go and look for her right away. However, if I venture out there carelessly, I might lose my own life. Is praying really the only thing I can do for now? Now then, what to do? Whoa. So yeah, let's choose slip into my bed. It's what she told me to do. There's a blizzard outside. If I insist on going out, I may endanger my own life. I know better than anyone else that I shouldn't underestimate mother nature. No matter how long I ponder about, no answers come to my head. I'll just call on a day. When tomorrow comes, I'm sure the answer will come on its own. Wrapped in the warmth of the room, the man tucked himself in the futon and drifted to sleep. The sound of birds tripping fills the silence. Yes, the long, grueling night has passed. Morning has finally came. The storm appears to have passed. The sun is shining, unraveling the clear blue sky. Are you leaving already? As the man is preparing to set forth, the voice of a woman can be heard. There's no need for you to be in such a hurry, is there? You should take your time and then go. Although he is tempted after hearing such sweet words, he tied and puffed his chest to show his determination. If so, then, please be careful on your journey. The woman lets out a lonely smile as she sees him off. Then after a while, as if having remembered something, she faced the man. A moment, please. Oh, traveler, please just let me go. I want to live. As I'm listening to your story, I can only think of inexplicable things. Hearing her words, the atmosphere started to feel as if the very air was freezing over. You said you got separated with your wife on the way here. But are you truly telling the truth? As she said this, an unsettling silence filled the hut. The man stood there in silence and refused to answer the question. Hmm. A car is driving along the mountain road. Pushing through the snow, it keeps going deeper and deeper into the mountains. I mean, I was wondering if there was a twist on that end. But let's hold on, we don't know yet. Driving the car is a single young man with no one in the passenger seat. The man appears to be impatient about something, as he wipes a sweat off his forehead. Eventually the car stops in front of a cliff as a door opens up. Oh, okay, this is a flashback. I see what's going on. The man takes out a huge bag out of the trunk and threw it at the bottom of the cliff. The bag that's big enough to hold the person is rolling and make its way down the cliff. So we were the monster all along. What are you actually looking for? It appears that you aren't truly looking for anything, are you? Although her attitude was very cold, the tone of her voice was gentler than yesterday, as if prying into something hidden deep inside the man, luring it to come out. You were alone in the very first place, with no wife to call your own. There is nothing for you to lose. That's why you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about having a wife anymore. It's better if she never existed. That way it's more convenient for both you and me, don't you think? She stares into the man's eyes as she whispered sweet words in his ear. Hug? That's right. 
You should forget about any other woman. Just stay here with me forever. Yes. He wondered when did he start to forget. His wife was the woman right here all along. As he convinces himself, he starts to gently close his eyes. Actually, I'm still pretty confused. It looks like we might have been tossing a body out. Well, we'll wait till the ending's over. Now, my dear, let me make you comfortable. Wherever you are, I'll accept it all and bear the burden along with you. The past or the present, it makes no difference now. Sarasa smiled as the man's neck rolled down the floor of a flood. Well, we were planning to head out of here in the morning. Baden, false sense of security. So to get all endings, I'm gonna have to choose that last option. Now I scouted out for obvious reasons a little bit to make sure it was safe for uh, YouTube. And it just looks like it doesn't quite go where you would think it goes. So this story very much remains its horror aspect, not something else. You can read this here. I don't really like reading these kind of lines. She's coming to curiosity, and the man decided to sneak a peek at the woman during the night. As the man snuck into her room, he pulled back the covers. Oh, it's you. Aren't you a bit late? I'm tired of waiting. Without realizing, he let out a grin and laughed at her unexpected reaction. He thought that she would refuse outright and become furious at him. You're such a lively man. Will you entertain me tonight? I've been waiting for this for a long time. A young man just like you. You can see a white snowy valley from a loose part of her kimono. The man reaches out his hand into the mounds on her chest. When suddenly the world started to shake violently and rotate. Due to that shaking, the man fell and hit his chin on the hard floor. Nani? He panicked to look around him. However, his body won't listen to what he says. As if his consciousness was placed somewhere else. What's wrong, dear traveler? It seems that you haven't yet comprehended what has actually happened. She puts her hand on her cheek as she lifts up the man's face. Laying on her chest, the man can see a decapitated body. The body of a man lying on the floor. With nothing above the neck, a gush of red liquid is flowing from the open cut. Yes, the man's neck had been taken by the Kubatori. It's just the punishment for his foolishness of trying to devour a woman. A deep sound of agony fills the entire bedroom. Whether it's from regret or is it from pain, nobody but him knows. He can only resent his very own shallowness as he screams out an indescribable cry for eternity. Baden, the Sinner of Lust. So we'll go out for the last option, which is probably going to be the true ending. Go out and look for my wife. So that's also another common theme. Once again, I kind of mentioned these type of stories. The the people who usually suffer these fates in a lot of these tales aren't usually good people. If they are good people, they'll tend to survive. But a lot of times, it's like a bandit or uh, just someone who's like a, like a really nasty person. And commonly, it's like... The girl turns out to be a spider, or some kind of local version of a vampire or something, and they, they specifically prey on them. They've been lured into a metaphorical web, or a literal one in some cases. So, those type of stories, kind of, they kind of serve a duality of like, both, if you're a bad person, you get your comeuppance, even if it's something that's not quite this world. And, also to be careful when you're traveling by yourself. <laughs> don't, don't go into weird places. And don't mess with of a worldly beings. This is not the time to sit around in a place like this. I need to hurry up and look for my wife. To receive such a warm reception alone by myself is just... At this very moment, somewhere out there, there she must be trembling in the cold. 
The man hurriedly puts on his clothes in a blink of an eye. He sneaks out of the hut quietly to not wake Sarasa up. So this is the part that has been confusing me. Because the one ending implied that he might have murdered his wife and like tossed the body. And this is just like a front, you know, for like for his alibi. But here, it's like the narration's pretty self-convinced, so we'll see. The front of the hunt was already dyed in white and barely visible. The never-ending blizzard has halted the man and blocked his way. The snow has piled up to knee level, and the visibility is just the worst. He keeps on walking as he fought to try not to get caught by the snow, knowing that in the path ahead his loving wife awaits him. See what I mean? Like, why would he go out if he just murdered his wife? I walk and walk, yet I can still cannot see anything in the horizon. Yes, there wasn't a single sign or guidepost around here. Like this, my wife might have already died buried in the snow. Right at the moment he was about to give up, he can see a shadow resembling a building in the distance. With a tiny amount of hope he has left, he continued to walk step by step. How could this be? It's sunny here and the air is clear. It's like this very place is separated from the snowy mountains. He's finally arrived at a place that looks like a village, lined up of old buildings. Where is this place? Could it be? This is the village Sarasa mentioned before. Still, why does it feel like there is not a single presence of a person? Feeling like something is wrong. The man decided to enter and explore the village himself. Inside the village, it was very quiet. Not even a single sound can be heard. It's as if the man himself is the only one left in the whole world. After not being used for so many years, dust has taken over, covering everything inside the houses. Ghost village. Gradually such words came into his mind. Perhaps this is a different village than the one Sarasa mentioned before. The man keeps walking as if having these thoughts inside his mind. Looking down the path, he can see a trail of footprints that are not of his own. I wonder whose footprints are these? Maybe it belongs to my wife. There shouldn't be anyone else's deep inside the mountain. Not entertaining the possibility of the footprints not being his wife's, he decides to follow the path. Following the small footprints, a trail that looks like something is being dragged can be seen. Were they carrying something huge if they dragged it? The mystery is only getting more and more unclear. Following the footprints, he goes deeper and deeper. But eventually he found a particular warehouse that emanated an unworldly atmosphere. So this is like another like stage of these kind of stories. A lot of times there's like a false village. It's like abandoned or something. The mysterious footprints appear to continue inside the warehouse. The man can feel that something is wrong. Even so, he still decided to open the warehouse door. The warehouse's door is exceptionally heavy. Even a man would never need to use all his strength to open it. The door slowly opens as it lets out a creak. At that very moment, a stench of something raw and surged into the air. This is probably where the, uh, the uh, Kubatori has been hiding the bodies. Something's been left here for a very long time. A ray of moonlight penetrates the looming darkness inside the warehouse as a pile of human bodies missing their necks started falling down. Lying beyond that, I said that caught my eyes was the mutilated body of my wife. Everything from the neck up has been cut off. Her body is lying on the ground without a head attached. See? This is what I mean. The one was the one- well, I was trying to debate, like, does she have powers? Is she able to, like, supplant our memories to lure us in? The way it was curiously scared about, it clearly was someone's doing. My wife was murdered. As the man felt nauseous, he closed his mouth tightly right away, trying to hold it in, but to no avail. The white snow has been sullied by his vomit. The shock of losing his wife, the sight that he shouldn't have seen, and the feelings of guilt. Assaulted his mind all at once. As he is panicking, he loses his strength and reaches to the ground while wheezing. I don't know what's happened here. All I know is that my wife has been murdered by something. And the fact that there are a huge amount of corpses left behind here. Moreover, all the corpses are decapitated. This is obviously something abnormal. You would fear. Yeah, I would say abnormal. There's no way for me to understand any more than this. I don't even know any further than this. 
No matter what I do, I can't calm down. It's dangerous to wander around these parts, and the Kubatori might appear. To go outside this late at night is especially dangerous. Suddenly, Sarasa's words came to my mind. The folklore about a certain monster that I heard from that hut. Don't tell me. Could such a ridiculous thing truly exist? Here's the other explanation. Sometimes, uh, this writer's works, the different bad ends and endings, almost kind of exist in their own dimensions. It's, I feel like they're more representational of, like, a character. Sometimes, like, are you a really bad dude? Or are you, like, a neutral dude? You're like this, like this, like that. And, like, the story kind of altered itself to accommodate that. That's what I'm somewhat thinking. Did you find her? A cold voice jumped in from behind of all the man. All of a sudden. Whoa, ho, wait, oh, hi. That's, that's big. Dear Traveler, haven't I already warned you that the Kubatori would show up around these parts? Staying from the ray of moonlight, she spoke to the man with the same attitude as before. However, if there was a definite difference from before, that would be... Grasping in her two hands was a huge sickle. Such a weird face you're making right now. Do you want to know how I turned out like this? She brandished her sickle towards him as she gave him a cold glare. Unfortunately, but it's better that you don't know. Please don't resent me, dear traveler. It's your fault for not heeding my warning. I'm pretty sure it's your fault for killing people! The huge plate is swung vigorously as it cuts the wind. Ah! That's it. <laughs> that, that's the climax. Well, there's going to be more. But that's the climax. We died. No hope. No chance of hope. Not even a, not even a glimmer of hope. It's just doomed. Well, that's how these stories usually go. Yep. It's a very old tale. There existed a certain village deep inside the mountains, isolated from the rest of the world. The village is said to be cursed. Every passing night, a monster would appear and cut the neck of any human within its sight. This monster's name is Kubatori. Although there is nobody who has witnessed its appearance, any traveler who happens to meet it will have their neck cut. Fearful of the existence of this folklore, the villagers perform a ritual to calm the Kubatori. Once every year, they would sacrifice a young child as an offering in order to ward off the evil. Should the child be chosen as the offering, they would be locked inside a warehouse, where they would be decapitated by a huge sickle. It is said that the purer the child was, the more effective it would be. In exchange for the cruel ritual, the Kubatori has been appeased, and the village is slowly regaining its peace. The villagers believe that as long as he performed the ritual, the village would be able to continue existing in peace. Now be good and sit there obediently, no matter what happens to whoever may come. Never even try opening the door. Do you understand? A young woman peeked through the small gap in the door and said it's the little girl. She seemed quite impatient, as if she was running out of time. Yes, I understand. No matter what happens to whoever may come, I won't open this door. With an innocent look on her face, the girl trusted her mother's words, and did so without a question. Wait here as you're told like a good girl. I'll definitely come back for you. Fingers crossed. Yes, I will be a good girl and wait for mother and father to come back. You're such a good girl. It's a promise between us, okay? The woman lets out a smile of relief as she closes the door tightly. The light from the hut is starting to disappear. Being left alone in the darkness, the little girl sits patiently as she waits for her parents to return. However, no matter how long she waited, none of them ever came back. How much time has passed? 
the girl's belly started to grumble. She hasn't eaten or drunk anything for days. She's reaching her limit. The promise was dearest mother. Mother, please forgive me. The girl decided to open the door and walked outside. And then she finally understood. What happened to her parents on that day? My parents are never going to return. I who was chosen as a sacrifice is still alive, while both my parents were executed. The fact is that both my parents gave up their lives for me. The girl cursed herself. She can't help but curse herself. And the village that drove them to their deaths. From then on, a few years had passed. It was around the time that the girl had grown up to understand what was going on. On that fateful night, the village is destined to perish. Such is a devastating sight, something that words cannot describe. The monster from the folklore came and devastated the village. The village's brutally decapitated bodies were all carelessly stacked inside a warehouse. Within a single night, the peaceful village has turned into a ghost village. Such is an edible thing. The Kubatoy dragged her big sickle covered in a red liquid running down from its blade. But something as she surveyed the now silenced village. This was probably the best outcome there is. The villagers have been repaid for every drop of blood they shed for their offerings. The price might be too great for it to be redeemed within a single night. Druen. Kubatoi. So that's it for Kubatori Sarasa. So, like I mentioned a few times uh, while I was playing it, this is a very, I'd say almost traditional story. There's nothing really over the top of it, except for the, the scythe, the sickle or whatever. But you can almost argue, based on how some of these stories kind of work, uh, while not literally supernatural, I, I think in a lot of these tales, a person can almost take on supernatural aspects and become what they are in the sense just like the village was fearing a kubatori whether it was real or not we don't know there is some supernatural stuff in the universe of these games but it's whatever they indirectly created the kubatori by having that ritual and then her parents sacrificing themselves in her stead and then you know she she escaped and eventually became some kind of uh, some kind of sickle killer that could defeat an entire village which is how a lot of these beings eventually become. Usually they're actually humans, and then some kind of extreme happens, and they become that. That's why I say it's kind of a traditional story. The only part that's confusing in a lot of like this creator's works is sometimes the, the bad endings kind of conflict with the true ending route. And my only explanation is that you almost enter a different dimension when you choose them, and that you are a self-insert. You're not, you're not really an established character. So the ending is reflecting on which you pick like your character is you so if you're in a rush to kind of get out of there maybe it's implying that maybe you're a bad person you're hiding a body up there or maybe kubatori had some kind of mind control powers i don't know well the other ending is more of the um actually one of the most traditional routes of these kind of stories like i said usually it's the spider usually it's, it's either a spider or it's a kind of a ghost yokai uh, a yurei i think they call them and it's always like a mountain bandit escaped somewhere, is running from the officials, hides out in the mountains or the snow, gets caught in the web, gets eaten. While the true ending route is more of just a traditional, oh, she was evil horror story kind of thing, and then a little bit of backstory to kind of tell you what happened here. That's my take on it. It was kind of like uh, Schrodinger's missing foot in another, uh, the ever game I played. Uh, you and me melancholy or whatever. But yeah. Um, a pretty straightforward story aside from that. Uh, not schlocky as much as some of their other works. A little more, a little more traditionally horror based. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Kubatori Sarasa. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.